I'm here in Cambodia, a nation that still feels the wounds of its horrific past. As I'm traveling through the country, it's apparent that Cambodia is no stranger to aid organizations. Orphanages, hospitals, housing projects, health campaigns, even Angelina Jolie is here. But in a sea of Land Rovers and good intentions, where are the best models? Come around the world with me on an epic journey as we investigate what really works in international aid. It's time to go beyond good intentions. If you look at most nonprofits around the world, they're not sustainable, there's inefficiencies, ineffectiveness in terms of the impact that they make, and quite sad in terms of you know, the future of nonprofits. He was right. I had just spent some time with an international nonprofit here that had remarkably low standards for their work. Their mission had expanded well beyond what they were capable of doing. They spent much of their budget importing foreign aid workers to run their programs, and they were implementing strategies that were extremely questionable in their impact. So I'm heading over to the Cambodia Trust, an organization that I'm told is the complete opposite. Apparently, this nonprofit, which helps countless Cambodians walk again, has really raised the bar. It's really important to identify the needs of the people that you're trying to provide services to. If someone was offering me help, I would like them to ask me the question, what help do you need? It was refreshing to hear. Kim Kunthia, a student from the Cambodia Trust School of Prosthetics and Orthotics, who had a disability himself, took me on a tour of the facilities. Here, students from all over the world are trained to be prosthetic specialists. I'm told that the standards are even higher than similar training programs in the U.S. We have tried to study hard and also study smart because even though it is a school, we have to work a lot. In the neighboring clinic, I meet Vong Rithi, or T as she prefers to be called, who has never walked in her life and will be fitted for her first prosthetic limb today. I feel like she's in good hands because the Cambodia Trust operates unlike your typical nonprofit, especially in the ways they collaborate. Here in Cambodia, in the physical rehabilitation sector, it's the strongest I've ever seen in the world. And it's people coming together and collaborating and cooperating and sharing their resources. The International Committee of the Red Cross makes the components. Handicap International Belgium make artificial feet and they will supply them to us free of charge. We would be recognized as the leaders on the training section. So all of the centers in Cambodia are run with graduates from the Cambodian School of Prosthetics and Orthotics. Working together, we can achieve much more than if we're constantly duplicating services or trying to convince a donor that they shouldn't give money to somebody else. It's impressive to think about how much cooperation went into making T's prosthetic limb. This level of sharing and efficiency was unlike anything I'd seen in other nonprofits. We mustn't see ourselves as doing a favor for anybody. We need to run it like a business. When you start running your nonprofit organization like a business, you're keeping your efficiencies top class. You're keeping your costs down. No investor wants to put money into a nonprofit if it's just going to be wasted or not spent well. It's unfortunate that I haven't been hearing this opinion more often from nonprofit directors around the world, but Mary agreed. Expatriate staff tend to be expensive. They usually take quite a considerable piece of any organization's budget. But also, you would like a project that is sustainable. So where you may need expatriate expertise at the beginning, one of your big roles should be to develop the skills in Cambodia that, that Cambodia can finally run the program by themselves. What draws me most to the Cambodia Trust is that they took performance to the next level by obtaining certification from the International Organization of Standardization. This means they maintain industry standards for their work and outside experts review their performance on a regular basis. They are voluntarily holding themselves to the same high standards that a for-profit clinic would. We find very positive impacts from, from the ISO. It has two major tenets to it, which is customer focus and continuous quality improvement. So it means that we always have to be thinking about our students or people with disability as customers. And it means that we always have to be looking at everything we do and how we could do it better. How we can do it better than we did last week or last month or last year. The payoff of the organization's higher standards is apparent just by observing the outcomes of their hard work. Today, T took her first steps. We want to hear from you. What if nonprofits were required to maintain higher standards? 
Share your thoughts at beyondgoodintentions.com. And join me next week as I head to India to evaluate the role of research in international development.